Welcome to the exciting universe of music theory. Are you ready to learn? Then let's begin. Today we will talk about Scale 3001, Lenillic, which sounds like this. This scale has 8 tones, which means it is called an octatonic scale. This is a bracelet notation diagram of scale 3001. The shaded circles represent tones that appear in the scale, and they are read clockwise, starting at the top. The pitch class set for this scale is 0, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11. The fourth class is 8, 19. This set is not prime. The structure of a scale is a description of the interval distance between each successive tone. This scale has a structure of 3112121121. The binary representation of this scale is determined by mapping tones of the scale to binary digits. Each binary digit represents a power of 2. To get the scale number, we add the powers of 2 together. The powers of 2 that are present in the scale, all added together, equals 3001. That is why the scale number, in decimal, is 3001. The scale number not only enumerates the scale with a unique index, but it also literally describes the tonal content of the scale. Represented as a binary number in base 2, the scale number is 101110111001. Here are the common triads present in this scale. The diagram in the center is a graph of parsimonious voice leading between triads. There are four major triads. There are five minor triads. There are two augmented triads. There are two diminished triads. Here is a Hamiltonian path of parsimonious voice leading that uses all the triads. This scale has eight modes. The first mode is itself. The second mode is scale 887, also known as Athelic. It sounds like this. The third mode is scale 2491, also known as Lalic. It sounds like this. The fourth mode is scale 3293, also known as Cyrillic. It sounds like this. The fifth mode is scale 1847, also known as the acrylic. It sounds like this. The sixth mode is scale 2971, also known as Yelanilic. It sounds like this. The seventh mode is scale 3533, also known as the Dilic. It sounds like this. The eighth and last mode is scale 1907, also known as Linilic. It sounds like this. Imperfections are tones that have no tone a perfect fifth interval above them. This scale has three imperfections. They are at positions. Here, here, and here. Hamitones are instances where two tones in the scale are a semitone apart. This scale has five hematones. They are at positions. Here, 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 and here. Cohematones are instances where two hematones are beside each other. This scale has two cohematones. They are at positions. Here, and here. The distribution spectra describes the size of each of the scale steps. 
which in turn describes how evenly spaced the tones are. A generic interval is how many scale steps are between one tone and another. A specific interval is how many semitones apart they are. The generic interval of one scale step comes in three different specific interval sizes. One semitone, two semitones, and three semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is the highest, three, minus the lowest, one, which equals two. The generic interval of two scale steps comes in three different specific interval sizes. Two semitones, three semitones, and four semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is two. The generic interval of three scale steps comes in three different specific interval sizes. Four semitones, five semitones, and six semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is two. The generic interval of four scale steps comes in three different specific interval sizes. Five semitones, six semitones, and seven semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is two. The generic interval of five scale steps comes in three different specific interval sizes. Six semitones, seven semitones, and eight semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is two. The generic interval of six scale steps comes in three different specific interval sizes. Eight semitones, nine semitones, and ten semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is two. And finally, the generic interval of seven scale steps comes in three different specific interval sizes. Nine semitones, ten semitones, and eleven semitones. The spectrum width of this generic interval is two. The spectrum variation is the sum of all the widths, divided by the number of tones. The spectrum variation of this scale is 1.75. Since the variation is greater than zero, this indicates that the scale is not perfectly even. The highest spectrum width is 2. Since this is greater than 1, we know that this scale is not maximally even. If every spectrum has exactly two specific intervals, we call that the Myhill property. This scale does not have the Myhill property. Since the generic interval ranges overlap, this scale is an improper scale. The interval vector of a scale is a description of what intervals exist between its tones. There are five intervals with a size of one semitone. They are here, 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 and here. There are four intervals with a size of two semitones. They are here, 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 and here. There are five intervals with a size of three semitones. They are here, 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 and here. There are seven intervals with a size of four semitones. They are here, 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 and here. There are five intervals with a size of five semitones. They are here, 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 and here. There are two intervals with a size of six semitones. They are here and here. Each interval does not appear in this scale a unique number of times, so this is not a deep scale. Heteromorphisms are comparisons between every interval in a set. They can be classified as contradictions, ambiguities, and differences. A contradiction exists when a small generic interval has a bigger specific size than a larger generic interval. For example, if a generic third interval has a larger size in semitones than a generic fourth interval, that is a contradiction. The number of contradictions in this scale is 10. An ambiguity exists when two intervals have the same specific size, but they have different generic intervals. For example, if a generic fourth and a generic third interval are the same size in semitones, that is an ambiguity. The number of ambiguities in this scale is 53. A difference exists when two intervals have the same generic size, but different specific sizes. For example, a major third and a minor third both have the same generic size, but they have different sizes when measured in semitones. The number of differences in this scale is 129. The coherence quotient measures the proportion of ambiguities and contradictions among a set's intervals. A scale with a higher coherence quotient is a good candidate for musical usefulness. The coherence quotient is 0.763. The sameness quotient measures the proportion of heteromorphic differences among a set's intervals. A scale with a higher sameness has fewer differences, so it is also a good candidate for musical usefulness. The sameness quotient is 0.342. This scale has no reflective symmetry, 
This scale has a different pattern of intervals ascending and descending, so it is not palindromic. This scale has no ridge tones. The balance of a scale depends whether the tones are spaced equally enough for the center of gravity to be in the center of the scale. <coughs> this scale is not balanced. The inverse of a scale is a mirror image. It is what you get when the sequence of intervals is reversed. The inverse of this scale is scale 955, also known as ionogelic. This scale is chiral. It cannot transform into its inverse by rotational transformation. This scale has no rotational symmetry. For even more detail about this scale, visit ianring.com slash music theory slash scales slash 3001. If you found this video informative, please consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. Of course not everyone has the means to support a project like this one financially, and that's okay. But if you are able to spare just $1 a month, your help is deeply appreciated. It will not only allow others to continue enjoying this series for free, but will also go toward improving the quality and quantity of music theory resources we can provide. Go to patreon.com slash music theory and join others like yourselves who totally geek out on all this nerdy stuff. Thank you to these Patreon patrons.